All right, let's go to a deeper level and look at transducers. Transducers are sensors that change some kind of mechanical reading or pressure into an electrical signal. Typical ones we're really looking at is manifold absolute pressure, mass airflow, fuel tank pressure sensor, fuel rail pressure sensors. Let's talk about what we're going to do. The MAP sensor is an absolute pressure sensor, changes manifold pressure into an electrical signal. Yes, I know we say it reads manifold vacuum. That's an automotive term. In reality, we're reading a low pressure we call vacuum. It must receive 5 volts from the PCM to operate. This is really 4.9 to 5.1 because of the very accurate system out of the PCM. If this is normal, that's our first thing. The second thing we need is there must be a good ground circuit. We like to see it less than 50 millivolts, 0 0.05 volts. If we have these two things, this should operate normally. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go look at the signal chart by vehicle-specific, manufacturer-specific charts. If we have good power, good ground, this chart should measure up. If it doesn't, something's wrong. Let's look at the circuit here. We've got a computer sending out information. It's got a 5-volt reference at 1. It's got sensor ground at 2 and the signal at 3. Now, we've already determined that 1 and 2 are good. If the signal is wrong at 3, we have a bad sensor. Now, if we have any wells we want to test it, one of the tests we do is take the sensor out, loop one back to three, and see if we can see five volts. Then we take and ground two to three and see if we can read zero. That tells us all the circuits working and the system should be able to read. So let's look at these charts. We got charts for digital. They change altitude and barometric pressure into frequency. We've got things that change analog barometric pressure into voltages. Now these are much tighter than what you're going to find in most places. Pay attention to these. Here's a digital sensor. Let's say we're at 1,000 feet. At 1,000 feet, we'd expect to see something between 159 and 163, somewhere in that range. If we're over 1,000 feet, we go to the appropriate range. If we're at 5,000 feet, we expect to see 1.44 to 150 hertz. We're reading a frequency. So we hear we have to change our meter, put it in the frequency position, and we compare it. Remember, we've already checked power, already checked ground. If it can't read barometric pressure, it also can't read map pressure. Let me say that again. If it can't read barometric pressure, it probably can't read map sensor pressure. So we can go look at analog. We get the same thing. Altitude turns into a voltage. Now, this particular sensor, let's talk about the 1,000 volts, 1,000 feet, 4.5 to 4.8 volts. Some manufacturers say that can be anywhere from 3.8 to 5.5 volts under 1,000 feet. 3.8, that fits inside the 5,000 to 6,000 foot range. And 5.5? We only gave the sensor 5 volts. I don't know where the other half a volt came from. Good specs are really, really important. Mass airflow. We don't have as good as specs. They're harder to come by. We've got two main types. We've got voltage-based sensors and we've got frequency-based sensors, just like we did with MAP sensors. Here's an example of a frequency-based sensor. B-plus is required of that. Pay attention. There's B-plus coming in on pin 2 for the mass airflow that must be there. It's important. At idle, we want 0 to 0 0.2 volts. At 30 miles an hour, we expect to see it 1 to 1 1.6, 55, 1.7 to 2.4. At idle, 0 0.6 to 0.9. What we're trying to do is evaluate and see if this sensor is working accurately. If we have B-plus, and by the way, We've got to have a good ground down here. Do we have good B plus? Do we have good ground? Yes. Does the sensor look like it's working? If not, it's got a problem. Do we need to look at the mass sensor? Is it normal? Make sure the ground for the return is good because we've got two grounds here. We've got a power ground and we've got a sensor ground. All of these should be less than 
50 millivolts on grounds, both of them. Here's another mass airflow versus voltage. We look at the voltage on this particular Ford. It tells us in grams per second. Helps us correlate between what we're seeing in a voltmeter and what we're going to see with our scan tool. We do a quick test. This is on a Ford mass airflow. We do a snap test. We want to see that second hump go above 3.7 volts if the engine can accelerate sharply. Now, that one doesn't quite make it to 3.7. Here's a good one that does make it to 3.7. At 3.7, it tells us it's clean and operational. It's responding quickly to airflow. What happens to airflow or MAP sensors is they get dirty. And with dirty, they don't respond quickly to changes in airflow. We don't get the nice sharp rise we see here. What we do is we clean it. If it doesn't clean up, we replace it. A replacement goes well above 3.7 volts. Frequency-based a little harder to test because we can't do that quick test. But look, we still have a chart up there. We have a voltage chart and we have a frequency chart. And we have a group of signals. We still got to have a power, still got to have a ground. So here we've got common things you're going to see. Two different types of sensors. Both need B plus and ground to work. Then we had a voltage chart and a frequency chart to tell you what's happening. Again, we're looking for dirty mass airflows. We're going to suspect dirty mass airflows tend to set code P0171. Look for a sluggish response out of your airflow sensor. That's what's going to be looking for most likely when you have a bad mass airflow. We do have some that are missing power, missing ground. A lot of mass airflow codes are set because of these two problems.